May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The keen gardeners among you will know that this last week, the Chelsea Flower Show has been taking place. It's the last day today, I think. The Chelsea Flower Show, dubbed the world's greatest flower show, is of course a place of cutting edge design and floral magnificence. Amongst gardens and floral displays this year is an entry from the Bible Society. The Psalm 23 garden, designed by Sarah Eberle. It is described as a garden for our time, a garden for a pandemic. And it has won a gold award, as well as awards for the best sanctuary garden and the best construction. It is designed to be an oasis of calm, a time to breathe amongst the bustle of the show. And according to the designer, takes us on a journey from beauty through the shadow of death to restoration. Sarah Eberle says that her favourite verse of Psalm 23 is, He restores my soul. This speaks to her of our relationship with nature through God, our realisation of being part of something bigger than we are. The garden, she hopes, will take people on the same journey as the psalm to a restful destination. One visitor described it as a little piece of perfect heaven. Our relationship with nature is very much in the forefront at the present time as we hear more and more about the devastating effects of global warming and the acute need for climate justice. Ahead of the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Glasgow in November, more than 50 religious leaders have signed the Glasgow Multi-Faith Declaration, which calls for those in power to put the 2015 Paris Agreement into effect. The Paris Agreement is a legally binding international treaty on climate change. The declaration stresses the urgent action that is needed to avert the loss, damage and forced migration threatened by climate change. Some of you may have been lucky enough to visit the beautiful heavenly island of Malta with its stunning scenery, its idyllic bays and its impossibly blue lagoons. The island where, of course, the ship in which St Paul was travelling finally ran aground after the storm described at the end of the Book of Acts, now known as St Paul's Bay. In Malta, the dry season is getting longer. This year, there was no rain from the beginning of March until the beginning of September. This has been the pattern for the last six or seven years. If this continues, it's estimated that by the end of the century, i.e. in less than 80 years, Malta will be a desert. That's in the lifetime of today's children. Do not fear, O soil, says the prophet Joel. Do not fear, you animals of the field. The pastures of the wilderness are green. But for how long, we say now in the 21st century after Christ? For how long? Have we destroyed God's beautiful creation forever with our love of money? our eagerness to be rich, and our senseless and harmful desires. The Glasgow Multi-Faith Declaration is about effecting transformational change in our lives to stem the climate catastrophe and to save creation from the damage we have inflicted. It's not good enough, says the Declaration, to ask other people to make changes. It's not good enough simply to sit back and to expect the government to do so. Change has to start with each one of us. 
if we don't make changes, if we ask someone else to do so on our behalf, it will never work. And these changes are not huge. They start with small steps in our individual lives. Renew rather than buy. Do without instead of buying things you don't need. Recycle, switch off lights, eat less meat, walk or cycle rather than drive, go by bus or train, not by car. You know what has to be done. We must keep being aware that if what we do is damaging, we have to find a new way of doing it. There's no, there's no right in expecting other people to do it if we don't do so ourselves. We have to think before we act. Can I change my behavior? Can I do that thing I was going to do differently in a way that causes the least damage to this wonderful world? What would Jesus do, I wonder? Maybe he would say, don't worry. Maybe he would say, don't worry about having the latest designer top when you've got a perfectly good top in your wardrobe. Don't worry about buying clothes you don't need. Don't worry about impressing your friends with your extensive collection of wines shipped from the other side of the world. Don't worry that you can't get hold of strawberries because it's October or mangoes because they don't actually grow in this country. Be content with what you do have. There is more to life than worrying about our food and our clothing. And perhaps the less we worry about what we wear and what we eat, the more we will be in our own small way helping to protect creation. He restores my soul, says the psalmist in Psalm 23. And in Psalm 126, which is the psalm set for today, the psalmist reminds us that those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. And those who go out weeping, bearing the seed, will come back with shouts of joy, bearing their sheaves with them. All we have to do is to look after what we have so generously been given. Amen.